Let's bring out <laughs> the next guest. He is a Yale history professor whose latest book is On Tyranny, 20 Lessons from the 20th Century, Timothy Snyder. Timothy. <laughs> How you doing, sir? Hey, great to see you. Great to see you. All right. So uh, you are, uh, your expert is in, uh, expertise is in tyranny. So this is your busy season. <laughs> uh, yes. And you offer 20 lessons, but this is TV. Give us the top three. Okay, let me give you three and a bonus. The first is don't obey in advance. It's normal to adjust to a new don't situation. Obey. Don't obey in advance, Don't right? obey the dictator. Don't obey the shift. Don't obey the drift. Don't follow what everyone else is doing. When there's a special moment like the present one, figure out what you stand for and be yourself. Normally, okay. normally we adjust. Like I have not read this book. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the confusion. Could we not show that one? Could we show the other one? Um, yeah. The, uh, the, the, he okay. cares no. about tyranny and book sale. Yeah. That's what I um, love about the profession. Okay, number two, de defend institutions, right? This is, this, uh. is not, this is a time when people like you and me and right. our friends say, the institutions are gonna save us. This is wrong, right? We have to save the institutions. Yes. They don't do it on their own, right? So it's, this, this, is, this is the moment of ask not what the institutions can do for me, it's ask what you can do for the institutions. Fill them out, support them, don't expect them to be robots because they're not. Number three, believe in truth. Believe in truth. Without truth, we don't have trust. Without trust, we don't have the rule of law. Without the rule of law, we don't have democracy. So people who are going for post-fact, people who are against the truth, they're taking the direct line to killing democracy. It's the shortcut to getting rid of democracy. When we, when we think about, Bill, when we think about post-fact, when we think about post-fact, we think post-modernism, then we think Berkeley and baguettes and France and nice things. But what we should be thinking about, in all seriousness, is fascism. It's the fascists who said, everyday life doesn't matter, details don't matter, facts don't matter. All that matters is the message, the leader, the myth, the totality. We should be thinking about the 1920s. Right, I, I mean, if you... <laughs> I made a little list. Of, of things about Donald Trump, uh, which, you know, remind me of third world dictators. Uh, you're a narcissist who likes putting his, names on, his name on buildings. That's what they do and, yeah. Um, <laughs> you appoint your family members to positions of power. Blech. Your rallies are scary. <laughs> you hate the press and use your own propaganda outlet instead. Blech. You want to hold missile parades. You know, he, he wanted to have a missile parade. But um, you use your office for your own personal financial gain. You like other dictators and strongmen. You claim minorities are the cause of the economic anxieties of the majority. You lie so, so freely your supporters give up. It's everyone except dressing in a military costume. When is that coming, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to laugh at Is any, that just I, funny? I'm or not, is that no, just... I'm not going to laugh at any of that because, you know, <laughs> in, in, your, in your world, it's third world dictators. In my world, where I come from, it's, it's the 1930s. Right. Picking out a group of your neighbors and citizens and associating them with a worldwide threat, that's, that's the 19. 30s, right? right? And what we have to remember about the 1930s, we think of Hitler and Stalin as supervillains, but they're not. They could only come to power with some form of consent. So Hitler matters, was elected. Right, what, exactly. So this is the way regime change normally right. happens. There's an election by the rules, more or less. We'll talk more about that later. And after the election, from within, the regime is changed, step by step, which, by the way, is the bonus lesson. The thing that I really worry about is a lesson towards the end of the book is the Reichstag fire. That moment when a leader... Well, tell them what it right. was. Oh, okay. So, I'll, I'll tell you. The, the, so, the, the I know. Tell them. <laughs> All right. So, if you insist. Right. And Hitler gets elected in 1933. Elected. Right. So, you're elected you don't necessarily have policies that are popular. After the election, there's a mysterious terrorist attack. You use that as the occasion to Hitler suspend burned, civil rights. Hitler's right. henchmen so, burned down the Reichstag, which was their parliament. We don't know who burned the Reichstag. And they the blamed it on yeah. the Mexicans. We, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, no. no, it was. It, it was. It we was, don't know who burned it. Was, it was the Muslims. But the point well, is, <laughs> when the serious point is, when God. the terrorist attack comes, you will not necessarily know who did it. But what you can know is that certain kinds of leaders will use that moment to suspend right. your rights. So when that moment comes, despite your fear and your grief during your fear and your grief. You have to mobilize and protest for your own rights. Because the Reichstag fire is the oldest trick in the Hitlerian book. We cannot let that trick be played. Okay. I'm